G'day guys, another day out with this um, Pedasoli Sharps rifle. So this is the, the Quigley model. Um, I've been through it before with the sights and bits and pieces that we got on here. Um, this is the sole um, vernier sight, which gives me adjustment, which I'm looking at through a peep here. It's got a variable peep in it. Um, it's got a little reticle up the front here and a little bubble level on it. Um, this is shooting the 4570 um, in smokeless powder. So as I explained before, it's really running the speeds and the energy of a 45-110, even a 45-120, because we're able to get um, these projectiles, which we will go through a discussion today. This is a 525 grain. It's coated, so we don't need to run a lube in it, but that's a hard cast 525 grain projectile. Um, run those at just on the 1500 feet per second, um, so pretty good speed um, if we were able to run in this. Um, and what I'm actually running um, to do this at the moment, which I found, are these. These are the 325 grain um, Hornady FTX. Um, and the reason I'm doing all that is I'm testing as, you, as I put on some footage of what we're actually doing. about a correction for all that little lot there. Right. Uh, just right. They're, yeah. they're right on the height length anyway. Yeah. Yep. We'll do one more of a direct difference on exactly the same hold. Radio. With the other ones. Yep. Yep. So that's the 325 FTX. And these ones, it's probably a quarter, but these are running the 1450 feet per second. Radio. And this is going to be exactly the same hold, so you get a real difference visually. That's exactly the same hold. Oh, so it was low. So Maybe get some more speed there, but I don't think so. Radio. Anyway, that's that little job. Okay, unload. Oh, yeah. Okay, so let's try and see where this goes. This should be dialed in for approximately the spot. Radio, good to go. Let's just see where this goes. Left, low dust. Uh, six targets left, one target low. Okay, wow. That's a good height, wasn't it? Yeah. Left. Out there, I reckon. Okay. Okay, well that's pretty good height. Yep. All the mouse doing what it's supposed to do. Left. Uh, two and a half targets left, half target low. No, I'm out of windage adjustment. Okay. Bad on. I think it's a tiny bit low, actually. Bottom right, a uh, quarter of a target right, half target low. It's more like three quarters of target low, so pretty close. That was a good hold. Left and low. 
quarter target left, half target low. Oh, bottom right. <laughs> Level with the right edge, quarter of a target low. <laughs> Close. Oh, bottom left corner, just off. <laughs> left too. In front, uh, just underneath, six o'clock, quarter of target low. Really? Yep. Oh, just off right edge, two o'clock, <laughs> just off. Oh, we've got the clouds. Right, level the bottom edge, three and a half targets right. Oh, just off right edge, two o'clock, <laughs> just off. Right and low, quarter of a target right, half target low. Yuck. Did not say. Oh, bottom right corner, just off. Man, that was close. Oh, bottom left corner, just off. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, that's our that's our shot for today. Okay. Good testing, but um, and to do that with these um, and those 325s, I'm able to run at um, 2,050 feet per second without overpressuring things. Might need to go a tiny bit further for what I want to do because what I was actually doing in the sighting of this site maxed out. It's a four-inch site. There is a higher sight, but uh, listen, we're just using the four inch. It's already fairly compromised to shoot, which I'll go through in a minute. But I had to go to the bottom of the reticle at the front, and that is just on my elevation. So I've just got enough working in this place. Um, not quite the perfect way to hold it and that sort of stuff, but still working. And we may do up another set and come out and get the job done, getting on at a mile, but we're just testing at the moment. So part of the details that go with all this sort of stuff, um, the more speed I get, the more efficient bullet I get, the less holdover I've got. 
the negatives of running a, a shot like this and I've heard some comments from people as to why you haven't got cheek welders they used to have been taught to put their cheek on the shoulder you don't have that choice when you're when you when your shots up here so all your normal cheek weld and that sort of stuff uh, and your shoulder position everything is changed massively with shooting something like this um, and it doesn't really matter if you're shooting from the bench or you're shooting from the sitting position or wherever it is it's a body thing that we're actually talking about and because I need all that angle I need to be up so high not something we suffer with with and the right sort of setups and Charlie Tracks and things on scopes but for this sort of thing it is the nature of it which puts bits at another level of um yeah, getting your mouth in the right angle but listen rifle shooting really well but well, show was on there shot really nicely really happy how it's all performing i think the last bit of whether i just um suck it up and deal with the bottom of that scope or maybe run these a tiny bit faster try and get to the 2100 feet per second without over pressuring things but um hey we're on it last bit i want to go through actually i'll put this rifle down just bear with a second i just want to explain what i'm doing on the front here um, I've made a little tripod, simple tripod system, a little bracket to be able to put the ammo on so I can get to it easy without bending down and picking it up. But that's that little bit there. Here looks a little more complicated, not too much more complicated. Because I'm six foot four, like I said, I needed something tall and something stable. So normal sticks, I probably could build something, but I had something in the cupboard. The only bit I found when I shot it before was it's because it's so light, it was moving the feet. I put a bit of weight these little bits here are steel extensions on the bottom of this which have got points on them rather than little rubber grips so they stick properly and they still felt a little light so what i've got is this is a weight we keep in the truck for the spotting scope i've just attached that by some spring strap um, straps through the center here which is doing nothing more than just holding it down but i just tested that that's what part of what i was doing i was shooting the rifle was running backwards across across here feet didn't move at all it stayed where it's supposed to so there was no messing with gear and kicking feet around or that sort of stuff it's buffing away up there and the last bit i want to go through is people have asked or in the comments and things people say why have you got the barrel resting on the uh, uh, resting on the barrel rather than on the stock now if you know that look at that rifle yes there is a little wood stock there but the little wood stock bolts directly to the barrel anyway not really made for that, it's made for your hand. These are made so they do run on the barrel. Um, and that's, that's if you have a look at the, the, the Quigley shooting competitions and things like that, you'll see that people are resting on the barrel here. There is some logic to go with that side of it. A lot of the guys that shoot properly from the barrel, so they're resting the full rate of the rifle and holding the rifle back in here and shooting like that. You see guys sitting and doing that side of things. Um, some of them, well, you'll find they'll have little tape marks and things on their rifles. So that the barrel is always sitting in the same place to try and get the same harmonics. Um, I'm doing it a different way. What I'm actually doing is, much as I'm trying to get to roughly the same place, I'm really carrying it more in my hand, so I want it just to be operating off me and just sliding over this. This is just helping me. When it's going bang, it's me that's involved. I'm not actually giving the full weight to where the barrel's really resting on here. This is the little bit of support and the logic. This has got some soft rubber stuff underneath, and then I have a soft sock on the top here two things one to um, remove any or not damage anything where it slides across there easily but really what I'm trying to do is make sure that it is really shooting in the same form offhand which is what I felt with the whole body standing up particularly I get a whole the whole body moves the rifle shoots flatter it doesn't do the bouncing and things like that and as you see out there um, I'm probably trying to step too far like normal but at one mile we are just around the dancing around the plate and it really comes down to me getting my mouth on the right angle working at exactly that hold with a fairly crude system well a very very advanced system for what the rifle is but still it's open sights at a mile and we are just sort of nicking that 24 inch plate obviously a bison size or all the other things we had hit lots of times but you know you know us on this channel it's the 24 inch plate or it's nothing or or it's a 12 inch plate i should say but anyway we'll stay with 24 for this one hopefully get it done next time but that's the little update of where we're at where with this little project anyway guys some thanks for checking in hope you enjoyed i'll catch you next time